So hello, my name is Peter Bulljensen. I'm a CEO of, uh, of CHOSA. And with me today, I have uh, two board members also from CHOSA, Klaus Friesenberg and Ingrid Etterud there. Uh, so uh, be kind to me, please. <laughs> so basically, we CHOSA is a, we bought a, uh, we have a, it's a management buyout. We bought a product that we've developed previously where I was a CEO in Oncology Venture. The product that we thought was the, the uh, most interesting, it's about cisplatinum. And cisplatinum is, a, uh, is one of the most active cancer agents out there. There is 16 different cancer indications where cisplatinum is used. It's an old product, and uh, we have not the, had the benefit before with a precision with this tool. So there has been new compounds coming in where there is precision with a companion diagnostic. We've not had that. What we have now is basically a system where we can identify the patients who who will benefit for our product. And also, we have a new formulation. So we have two uh, new innovations in, in our product, a response predictor and a liposomal, uh, a liposomal formulation. This is a situation where we can see that this works. This is, uh, you can say, the... Oh, I don't think I, this is going to work for me. No, I will not use it anymore. So what, basically what we have is, uh, is a two, two improvements in, our, in, in a cisplatinum that is used for 16 uh, different indications. We're looking for now, we're looking for partners. We are out, uh, basically think we have enough data to, to partner. And the uh, product came 50 years ago. This is the Danish uh, Tevling Suglist. He got testicular cancer in 79, was cured. And there was also another Tevling Suglist who was cured with his uh, testicular cancer by cisplatinum. Cisplatinum and carboplatin is a sister product. They, they work in a lot of compounds, com a lot of, of, of cancers. But if you, if you see in testicular cancer, it works in 90% of patients. In Sweden, there are 376. In, tw in 2020, there was 376 new cases. In ovarian cancer, it's also very, very effective. However, in other cancers, it may be the best product you have out there, but it's just not working with all cases. And today, with a precision tool, we're able to identify the patients who will benefit. And we also have now, if we can see that the patient benefit, we also have a chance to give them a less toxic compound, a less toxic compound of, of cisplatinum in a liposome. There has not been any development in response prediction, and the reason is that this is very complex. When we look at cisplatin, there is a lot of mechanism for actions going on in the cell, and there are also several resistance mechanisms. So there's never been a simple solution to this complex product. And there's not a simple solution today either. It's basically, it was shown two years ago that the response to cisplatin is linked to 900 different proteins and genes in the, in the cell. So it's a very complex situation. I'm very happy here. I'm lucky that I was able to work with Sting Knudsen, who has been able to basically do systems biology on this problem. And before this publication came from, he, he had identified 205 genes that basically tell us whether the platin is going to work or not. And we can read those 205 genes in a simple chip today, so we can read it in one place. Some of those genes we don't want to see. We don't want to see them give resistance. Other genes we like to see, they give us sensitivity. And if the right composition of the 205 genes is there, we have 100% fit, and we have a very li high likelihood that the product's going to work. So we can say it is, in a way, rocket science. But it's also a simple thing. We can take the biopsy. This is biopsies in the middle. That are, they are basically what we do when we when there is a cancer. It's been put into formalin and then put into paraffin. And we can do a simple test on a gene chip and see whether the product was going to work on this patient or not. We have started with breast cancer, where we have done a prospective study. If we don't have, if we don't have a response predictor, cisplatin works in 10% of those patients. We've done a study, we published this at this year's ASCO here in June, and what we did was that we included patients with 
with different levels of likelihood of response. It was blinded to the clinicians and to us, and we could unblind it here in, in, at the meeting uh, this year. Basically not including, we could see that the, the bottom was not included, that was for the, for, the, uh, for the experts to say this patient should not. So we didn't know whether the patient was in the low or in the high, but not the bottom third because clinicians thought that it wouldn't work. They agreed with us that we have a response predictor. And we now have the data basically seeing that progression-free survival in the high, that is the ones that are in the top 20 of those 205 genes, they have a progression-free survival of 19 weeks. And the the low end is basically only eight weeks. Eight weeks is a heavily pretreated breast cancer patients. They received seven previous therapies for their, for their cancer. So those patients are really, you can say, veterans with this disease. It's a terrible situation. Eight, seven, eight times they've previously been shown, uh, known that they, the tumor is growing. We have to shift to another treatment. Platinum works to a fraction of those patients. We have something we can give to those patients, and it gives them a progression-free survival. The eight weeks there is basically the time between scans. So the women that got this, you can say, the lower, uh, the lower uh, level of response like they didn't have any benefit of the product. So it showed in response rate, it showed in progression-free survival, and in overall survival. Response rate, that was only seeing responders. That means that the tumor shrunk to less than a, less than a third of this original volume. We had that in, we had the 25% response rate in the high level. We had a progression-free survival, as you saw before, with 19 weeks versus eight weeks. And also overall survival, the patient survived longer also. There was a tendency, it's not statistically significant, but there's a tendency that these 11 weeks we gained in progression-free survival also gave them the extra survival time. This is a very tough disease. They all died of their disease, but we were able to keep the tumor down for some period. So this is enough, you can say, two and a half time better progression-free survival is enough to have a road for approval. Chosa now thinks we have enough not to do more clinical trials, but basically find a partner. And if we think about partnerships, we can think about how can this be used not only in heavily pretreated breast cancer, but also in early. So it's early breast cancer and early lung cancer. Here's a picture of how a lot of breast cancer patients today are treated. They're receiving chemotherapy before surgery. And sometimes the chemotherapy is so good that the tumor shrinks and sometimes the tumor completely disappears. And if we use our drug response predictor and our liposomal product on the, on the high 20%, we can add that to those patients that will benefit. Or else they won't get platinum, but this can help them. So this is what we see, an opportunity to treat in especially triple negative breast cancer. The other thing is that we've shown in lung cancer, here we've shown that when we look at the cisplatinum predictor, we can identify the patients that survive better than, than the ones that are not sensitive to platinum. So if you have a DRP score of 90, there is a 90% three-year survival after surgery. Those patients were all went to surgery for their lung cancer. They received platinum afterwards. And if platinum works, you can actually have a, a, this, this nice cure rate. But if they don't, it doesn't work, you'll have... Uh, Oh, shoot. I'll go back here. Sorry. So if it doesn't work, the surgery works. So some patients are cured, but it's still, you still have only a, you can say, a 40% three-year survival if your cisplatinum doesn't work. So what does it mean today? Yesterday, it's basically this year's ASCO, we saw great developments with platinum in combination with the immunotherapies. Immunotherapies is some of the products that have taken the world by storm. They have really changed some of the therapies, so some people now survive because of the immune system. We can use the patient's immune system to, to basically uh, kill the tumor cell. But in large cancers, as lung cancer, bladder cancer, and head and neck cancer, the trick is to give it together with cisplatinum. So we have a response predictor for cisplatinum. We have no response predictor out there for the PD-1s. And that means that we can basically now see ourselves coming in a situation where we can help the lung cancer patients, we can increase the, the response rate, and we can avoid treating the patients that don't have benefit for platinum. So we see a view where we see Chosa can come into all those PD-1, PD-L1 developers, 
and we can, we can see that we are armed with our Synergy Focus Companion Diagnostic, we can basically take half of the patients out and not give them cisplatinum, but the other half is where you're getting the best ever response rates. There are 17 companies out there developing PD-1, PD-1, uh, PD-L1 products. It's the best selling products out, in the, out there today, and coming up with a companion diagnostic there is, as we see, very important. So one last <laughs> thing is that together with nano, there's a publication here that says that there's actually more synergy when it's added together with a liposomal product in nanoparticle cisplatin, which is what we have. So this is what we're looking for. Partners, we're ready to partners. That was ironically going to be my first question, actually. What kind of, I'm holding your applause until we're done with the Q&A now. Uh, what kind of partner are you looking for? So we're looking, basically you can say we're looking for partners that are in the PD-1, PD-L1 market. This, Keytruda is one of the PD-1 products. It's the best-selling drug overall this year. It's not only in, in cancer, it's the best globally selling product. Obdiwa is number five or six of the best selling products. These are the sort of the really important future products. We are looking for partners in this market. There is now, of course, a lot of people trying to, trying to you can say, come in there. And there are also sort of 11 developers. And what we can aim, what we can aim for is a partnership where our response prediction will give their PD-1 the extra lift so they will have the best results with their PD-1. So we think we have a good, a good position there. We have also a liposomal product. There are companies been interested in that. There are companies been interested in precision medicine. And then, of course, if platinum as such, uh, if there are companies interested in that. So you have, we, have already seen interest? in? We, in we have started, and we've started, you can say, digital digital marketing together with, uh, with uh, Edison. And what we've seen is a very nice sort of, we have seen 12,000 engaged users with repeat views. This is sort of the, 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 the global view. And we also have had seen, you could say, the investors, sort of the, the ones that are, that are sort of looking into the, the opportunities. There has been a very nice interest in that. And we have started our, our BD activities. So, we know there's an interest in liposomal products. This is, a, uh, this is uh, Ibsen, who made a deal to, sort of in 2017 with, with Merrimack, and a year ago they were able to demonstrate that this was the best product ever in pancreatic cancer. Uh, they paid a billion for it in 2017. Were there any questions from the audience? No? Kim? Yeah, I had a question. Um, what do, kind of a deal do you see? Do you see the concept as a whole, uh, or would it be rather a deal that focuses on the DRP, or uh, what? What that's ideally, a, and what's that's like? A, that's likely? a good question. Basically, the DRP works with cisplatin, with carboplatin, and with the liposomal. So you could say we can do a deal on the DRP on the response prediction. We can do a deal on the liposome. But we see the combination of a companion diagnostic and the liposome is also a very strong uh, product to, to, to aim for. And with regards to the response prediction, how viable is that for other uh, platins or even other treatments? No, the, no, the so genes you're is, looking at, uh, is it possible to, to develop it further? No, I don't think. I think it, we have a 205 genes. We can see, as you saw, the top. 20 of the breast cancer patients were the ones that benefited. In the lung cancer, we can exactly see it. I don't see any use for improvements. We would like to say that this is, you can say, does it work beyond cisplatin and carboplatin? Uh, probably not. It's a drug-specific uh, signal that we're looking at. Oxaliplatin is another product. I don't think we can predict that. <laughs>